Hello and welcome to the CERN Control Center, which last weekend witnessed the restart of the LHC machine, just over one year after its initial launch on 10th September 2008. The atmosphere was electric as all eyes were trained on monitors showing protons circulating in opposite directions at an injection energy of 450 giga electron volts. But let's first enjoy some of the images that were made specially to mark this historic milestone for the organization. July 14th. Quarter to midnight. Second filling was uh, last year where we did the same thing for the LHC. In the end of a, a long, long journey for many of the people who have been working on it and a feeling of achievement, of uh, joy, of all sorts of things. Yeah, and after the incident of 19th September 2008, the LHC was set back by more than a year. Can you tell us what took so long to get back on track? Well, it was a long procedure. There was the first thing, of course, we had to do was to do the repair. And the repair was complicated by the fact that we had to take the 53 magnets which were damaged, bring them up upstairs to the uh, SM18 to repair them, complete the repair, either repair or replace them, then bring them back down, put them back in their original position, hook them up to the rest of the machine, and then test them. Right. As well as that, there was damage done to the vacuum, so we had four kilometers of vacuum, mm. vacuum beam pipe to clean. Mm. Um, uh, new techniques had to be developed to do this in situ. Yeah. The third thing we had to do was uh, ensure that there would be no collateral damage if ever in the future we had such a, an incident. Mm -hmm. And the way we've done this is we've added pressure relief valves to, uh, to the machine in, on the dipoles. Now, the, probably the most significant thing which we had to do was a redesign of the magnet protection system. Yeah. And this system now is capable of detecting um, signals which are uh, 3,000 times uh, more sensitive than, than last year. You were obviously very satisfied with the test performed on the weekend when protons and ions were first injected back into the LHC ring. Last weekend, on Friday evening, the team captured both beams with the radio frequency system, and that was essentially done with one day ahead of schedule. Can you tell us in what way operating the LHC is different to the previous accelerator LEP? Well, the main difference is due to the fact that LHC is a superconducting machine. Superconducting, we mean superconducting magnets. Yeah. So the difference between the LHC and, for example, the SPS is in mostly in the magnets. Mm -hmm. With respect to the previous machine, LEP, the difference is that LEP had many 288 superconducting cavities. Yeah. Superconducting cavities are a different beast from superconducting magnets. The major thing about superconducting magnets in, in a machine like the LHC is the stored energy in the coils. So you can have a stored energy in the LHC, which is equivalent to, a, to a, an aircraft carrier traveling at full battle speed. <laughs> and we have to get rid of this energy in something like 20 or 50 seconds. So if you imagine trying to stop uh, an aircraft carrier in 20 or 50 seconds, you <laughs> realize the, 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 the problems of involved in that. Yeah. The second difference for the LHC is when we have a large amount of stored beam, mm -hmm. then the beam energy becomes very significant. Yeah. The beam energy can melt something like a ton of copper. So if it's not well controlled, there yeah. you could produce damage in the machine. So we have to be very careful for, to protect the magnets and protect the machine. Absolutely. Our video team were in position throughout the weekend of 21st and 22nd November to film the restart for Eurovision. Let's take a look at some of the images. Stefano is the boss, but it, it's the Verena will fire the injection kick, kicker to send the beam into the machine. SPS cycle, CNGS1. SPS cycle, CNGS2. SPS cycle, CNGS1. LHC injection. The beam is at point three, that, that's uh, about, about three and a half kilometers. Next shot. LHC injection. Yeah, okay. Yay! <laughs> this is the first time we've captured beam one. So in, in last year we had beam two circulating, but we only had a few turns of beam one. So this is the first. And this tells us a lot of things. It tells us that the magnetic properties of the machine are good, that the aperture is clear, uh, there's nothing sticking into the beam pipe anywhere. So it's a very, very encouraging sign and, and remarkable progress. Opening. 
So we now have beams circulating clockwise and anti-clockwise in the LHC to produce collisions, but the two beams need to be captured by the RF radio frequency system. Can you explain this capturing process to us and how long it took? Well, um, there was two phases. We decided to go for a fast capture on the, I think it was the Friday evening, and basically um, we sent we asked the RF people to go to point four where the, where the system is installed and they switched on the, the RF system to the same frequency as the beam and it, it captured the first time. It was wow. unbelievable. But I think this was helped by the fact that two things. First of all, we had measured many turns of the, of the beam going around. The beam was going around without capture for mm -hmm. something like 500 turns. So what you need to do then is measure the frequency of the beam, measure, try to measure the phase and, and switch on the RF system. And as far as I understand, what was done is they set exactly the same frequency as they did 14 months ago, and okay. it worked. Can you talk us through the steps that are, are going to be performed to the collisions at 3.5 tera electron volts per beam? Well, the, the steps, first of all, we, will, we have some work to do early next year to prepare the machine for the higher energy. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, what we will do is, this is preparation, what we're doing now is preparation, f of course, for injection. We will, accelerate, we will accelerate the beam before Christmas to something like 1.2 TeV. Mm -hmm. um, Next year, after we do the repairs, which will allow us to go to 3.5 TeV, then we will do the same things we've done now, inject at 450 GeV, prepare what we call the energy ramp mm -hmm. to 3.5 TeV, and make sure that all of the parameters are constant during the ramp. That means, the, for us, the Betatron tune, which probably doesn't mean too much to you, <laughs> but it's one of the parameters which we must remain uh, constant during, during okay. the ramp. And also, we have to make sure that the what we call the closed orbit, which is the tra trajectory inside the vacuum chamber, stays constant as we increase the energy. If we can do that, and we have systems for controlling that and making sure that they don't drift, then we should be able to get to 3.5 TeV. When we get to 3.5 TeV, then we'll have to bring the beams into collision. Okay. And bringing the beams into collision, before we do that, we will also uh, focus much more strongly the beams at the uh, interaction points for the experiments so as to increase the, n the event rate which they, they see. The physicists working on the LHC experiments are clearly eager to see the first collisions, uh, already collisions at 450 GeV and then at 1.2 tera electron volts before Christmas. These collisions will already be interesting to analyse, but what makes collisions at 3.5 TeV per beam so much more interesting from the physics point of view? Well, I mean, of course, it's the, it's the reason for building the LHC, it's the energy. Um, mm -hmm. We need, well, the highest energy accelerator in the world at the moment is the Tevatron near Chicago, mm -hmm. and it's working at 950 GeV per beam. So as soon as we get significantly above that energy, we can expect new physics. The spokespersons announced first collisions in all experiments yesterday. Let's take a few, look at a few of the images. Uh, it's really the, the beginning of, uh, of a terrific era and uh, we are so excited today and, uh, and I think it's amazing that uh, in the next in the year, in the months, weeks, months and years to come, the, the, our excitement will have, uh, will have an additional escalation. Uh, the machine put in the first beam, two minutes later the second beam and suddenly the experiment started ticking. So even before the computers realized that we had the first event, already the people in the counting room knew that something was happening. We see here the collision happened at this point and you see all the tracks going out, all these are the signals from the detectors, whether everything works as it should and it looks actually quite fine. So now the fun starts, now the young physics starts. One, 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 one million. Honestly speaking, not. But you see, I'm smiling. I'm extremely happy that uh, collision took place tonight. To me, it's a perfect proof that we have working detector. We have a beautiful collaboration, which is necessary to make beauty physics. This is the main proof to me. Uh, this is the first collision event that we've seen in CMS, uh, so it's a very interesting uh, moment as well. So you can see that the, uh, the inner tracker of the uh, CMS detector, uh, the central part was off, the outer bits were on. In red is the electromagnetic calorimeter, so this is lead tungsten crystals. And the height of these towers uh, tells you the amount of energy that has been deposited in these crystals. Blue is the hadron calorimeter, and these are different views of the same event. And here you can see the uh, cylindrical nature of, of CMS, and you can see uh, the energy being uh, distributed all over the place. The two protons have uh, collided in the heart of the experiment. What are the next major milestones for 2010? Um, we will, sometime in the middle of the year, start making preparations for going beyond 3.5 TeV. 3.5 is, is a very major step, but of course the design energy of the LHC is 7 TeV per beam, so we will try to in 2010 to go to 5 TeV and possibly in 2011 to push it to 7 TeV per beam or thereabouts. Putting the non-LHC experiments aside, there will have been no physics at CERN since the year 2000 when LEPT was dismantled. How do you feel about this and what do you personally expect from this new era which is about to start for particle physics? Well, um, LEPT was a fantastic machine which operated for 12 years and 
did some fantastic precision physics. The LHC will be a discovery machine. Mm -hmm. um, it's fairly sure that we will discover something. Some people think they know what it will be. Other people are hoping for things which they've never thought of before. Mm -hmm. So I think although we haven't had uh, high energy frontier physics since, since the year 2000, the, the CERN physics program, fixed target, AD, NTOF and so on, is a very, very complete program. There's been a lot going on. But of course, everyone wants to do the discovery physics and we hope to um, start, after, start back after about 10 years of, 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 of LEP to doing more discovery physics. Wonderful. Well, many thanks, Dr. Myers, and we wish you all the best for high energy collisions. Thank you.